creative mix of imagination and humor. This 92-minute computer-animated comedy was a huge success, pulling in almost five times its $115 million budget when it was released in November of 2001. The fourth feature from Pixar Animation Studios follows two quirky monsters employed at the titular factory who have to scare children in order to power their city, Monstropolis. Things take an exciting and unpredictable turn when one of the supposedly toxic humans sneaks into their colorful dimension. Writer and director Pete Docter successfully extrapolates a familiar childhood fear into a fully realized monster world, brimming with life and unique characters. Before this G-rated plot even begins, though, Pixar does more world-building and exposition during a fun eight-minute opening sequence than some TV shows are able to accomplish in an entire season. They turn the mundane, day-to-day -day operations of factory work into a new and vibrant experience, effortlessly laying out information to establish consequences that come later. A hilarious example of this is when a scarer unknowingly brings back a sock through a magical door and is quarantined and de-loused like a radioactive astronaut. Perennial comedian Billy Crystal portrays a plucky and somewhat overconfident green cycloptic sphere with four skinny limbs and the amusingly pedestrian name of Mike Wazowski. Alongside him is former Roseanne star John Goodman as a giant horned monster with furry blue and purple hair who is far more timid and gentle than his frightening appearance suggests. The two make an excellent pair with contrasting chemistry and whip-smart banter that feels like a years-old lived-in friendship. There's something else. What? A clay in the egg bay. What? Look in the bag. What bag? <laughs> oh, they don't have anything I like here, so take care, Celia. Excuse me, sir. What's going on, Celia? Please try to understand. I have to do something! Michael? Steve Buscemi is perfectly cast as a slimy, chameleon-like adversary who plots against our protagonist for personal gain. John Ratzenberger makes his requisite appearance as the friendly abominable snowman, while Jennifer Tilly is Crystal's tentacled receptionist girlfriend. The visuals in Monsters, Inc. are flawless, especially so in the 3D re-release. While the factory environment is somewhat drab, each monster is loaded with expressive color, like Goodman's polka-dotted hair, which reportedly took 11 hours to render per frame. After 16 nominations, composer Randy Newman finally won his first Academy Award for Best Original Song. His work on the score proper is fitting and playful, but not particularly noticeable. The levity of the slapstick gags pairs beautifully with the quieter moments of discovery, and the end result is a well-paced experience all ages can enjoy. The themes of parenthood and friendship will likely resonate with older audiences, while the multitude of unique creatures will spark interest in the younger crowd. Although it's missing a certain je ne sais quoi that keeps it from reaching the heights of Pixar's best, Monsters, Inc. is a winsome adventure with memorable characters. But now let's check out the YouTube comments from last week's episode to see what you had to say about it. Praising the more mature, heartfelt story, you thought Monsters, Inc. was an awesome film. Whereas I'll score it an 8 out of 10. That does it for this quick excerpt, but if you'd like to watch full episodes of Movie Night and submit your own reviews to be included on the show, please visit the Jogwheel YouTube channel. My name is Jonathan Paula. Thanks for watching, and have a good movie night. Yeah.